Now, earlier this morning, uh, Sky's wonderful U.S. correspondent Annalise Nelson was there at CPAC in Dallas, Texas, which is the Conservative Political Action Conference, the largest and most influential gathering of conservatives in the world, and where the theme of this year's conference is America Uncancelled. I like it. Outsiders fans may well have attended CPAC Australia last year or the year before and heard Rita and I as guest speakers or certainly heard us chat about CPAC Australia on the show with Andrew Cooper, who organises the annual event here in Australia. Well, seeing as Annalise is there in Dallas, Texas right now with her wonderful camera skills and as the attendees all head for dinner, we thought we would ask Annalise to set up an interview for us on Outsiders. Ian Walters is the Communications Director for the American Conservative Union and for CPAC, and he joins us now. Ian, how are you, mate? Uh, good evening, folks. I just put it all together. This is Rowan and Rita and Annalise of CPAC Australia fame. I, I, as I'm listening to you, I'm like, ah, <laughs> I understand what I'm doing here now. Our good friend Andrew <laughs> Cooper at Liberty Works, of course, of course. We're paisanos here. Fantastic. Well, Ian, tell us about the highlights of the show, um, uh, how it's been so far. I was also intrigued by some characters got seven, a seven-point plan to get Donald Trump back into the White House. But tell us about the highlights of CPAC so far. Well, I think you had a number of members of Congress. So there's a heavy uh, Texas delegation, a heavy Texas presence here. Obviously, uh, the bulk of our of our attendees come from the southern part of the United States, from Texas, from Oklahoma, Kansas, adjoining states, uh, Louisiana, Arizona, and New Mexico. Uh, uh, on the western side. Uh, we heard from Marsha Blackburn today. We heard from a number of senators and candidates. A lot of the theme centered around, uh, w there's a lot of big tech angle in the talk today. We also did our best, our very best, speaking with um, activists and leaders uh, to explain how everything that we're seeing in America is connected to one another in perhaps a way that the mainstream media doesn't want you to know about. I don't want to criticize them too much, but when you begin talking about the mainstream media, big tech, you were just talking about Hunter Biden. Jen Psaki is a, a gifted wordsmith if you are able to translate gibberish with whatever she is saying. <laughs> um, but you have a, 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 a Democrat, you have a Democrat-led Congress, a Democrat executive branch uh, working in concert with, a, with one another, and of course, the, the party system. Um, uh, that, that supports it and campaigns. The next layer of it becomes big tech, media, and, and, and that those are censorship issues. And now we've got this, this woke corporatism, this sort of shareholder activism. And for most of our lifetimes, uh, the corporate scene always leaned toward the Republican side. Uh, I think those days are long gone. What it means is that Republicans and conservatives are not going to go along and remain silent when it comes to things like airline bailouts, right? When the lockdowns happened and you, uh, uh, you know, American Airlines, Delta Airlines, they come begging to Uncle Sam for taxpayer money to say, please, please, please uh, help us uh, remain viable. Um, I don't think that they can count on uh, Republican support for that anymore. You've even got corporations like Coca-Cola, you know, your, your delicious sugar water, uh, making their positions known on how they feel about voting laws in the state of Georgia. I mean, this is bananas <laughs> yeah. over here. So they've got a full court press going against conservatives. And then there's this layer of international players, Chinese propagandists on Twitter, Ayatollahs in Iran on Twitter. They're allowed to speak, but somehow conservatives are the ones getting canceled. It doesn't make any sense. Rita. Well, the, uh, the deck is stacked against you. How do conservatives in the states overcome that, particularly given big tech's importance in how people obtain news and communicate with each other about political issues? How can conservatives overcome uh, platforms that are controlled by people who can't stand you and want you silenced and thrown out of the uh, public square? Well, let, let's start by saying that obviously Silicon Valley has proved to not be an ally of uh, conservatives or conservatism. Nonetheless, as you're pointing out, uh, you know, I'm a communications uh, uh, professional, and that means that I have to rely on Twitter and YouTube and, and whatever other uh, platforms du jour uh, I'm forced to uh, uh, 
engage with. But at any moment, Jack Dorsey out there could shut down my account. My goodness, I wish he would. Um, because <laughs> it's not appropriate for Americans and for activists to be slaves to retweets and likes. You understand how all of this social media stuff is rewiring the human brain, our teenagers' brains. Uh, this idea that, you know, gratification is instant and uh, you don't even need words. You just put on pictures and if you throw on a bikini and get a million and two followers on Instagram, I mean, these people apply for media credentials. I say, what are you coming to me for? I want to call your parents and see if they know what the hell you're up to. <laughs> so it's important for conservatives to return to what we know is right about the human condition, that the human condition longs to be free, this radical experiment in whether a free people can govern themselves called America that runs counter to the way that humans have been ruled over uh, for time immemorial. Uh, this thing needs to be preserved, and whether social media is a part of that or not, it's beginning to look like it's not. Uh, you've got President Trump. ACU has joined the lawsuit with him to, uh, uh, to sue Facebook, to sue Google, to sue Instagram, to sue Twitter. Uh, this notion that somehow they can make your followers disappear uh, on a whim um, is, is, is it illegal? Is it unconstitutional? Uh, look, the lawyers who are smarter than me are going to raise those questions, but these are conversations worth having. If people opt in on our Facebook or on our Twitter because they want to hear our message, uh, then why are you preventing us from getting our message out? Uh, the fact of the matter is, is that I think savvy uh, 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 communications professionals never put all their eggs in the basket of these social media platforms. There's always a way to get your message out. For goodness sakes, look at look at the, the 4,000 people that were sticking in this room. Human contact has returned uh, to America in, as, we, as we move out of, uh, of, of Chinese corona pandemic land. And just to look at people, just to see people smile for the first time in a year is, is one a beautiful experience. But hey, we're talking about the future of America as well. And and you cannot prevent conservatives from getting together and talking to one another and connecting with one another. And that's the point of CPAC. Uh, we, we can't be canceled. You can't tell us to, you can't shut us down from just getting together. And we just came from a, a wonderful reception. A lot of love, a lot of happy faces, people clinking wine glasses for the first time in a long time. It's a beautiful <laughs> experience, despite what you might read in the American media. James. Well, it's great that you've got 4,000 people there all together finally in a room again after, you know, all of the coronavirus panics and everything else. But as you correctly state, freedom is not the natural condition of humanity. It's something that needs to be encouraged, nourished, um, and taught over and over again to each generation. So what does CPAC, what are conservatives doing? You're shut out by Facebook, you're shut out by Twitter, or, you know, at least muted there. Um, how do you connect with change that broader culture when it seems like at the moment in America, the left has the commanding heights of social media, traditional media, the schools where they're pushing critical race, woke agendas, and everything else. What do you do? How do you get that message out uh, to change the culture so that it turns the tide against all of these various forces? Let me do a bit of a preamble here, okay? We, we, you know, everybody knows the story of World War II and the service of, of, of the Australian military, especially in that endeavor, along, along with the UK and the, the allied forces. We move into things like Vietnam and Korea. You, you remember Tiananmen Square, another seminal media event. The fact is, is that uh, f the forces of freedom have been grinding up uncomfortably against the forces of communism and socialism for several generations, at least to, to, to my grandparents' generation, then my father's generation. Now it's my generation. And what is our, our goal here? I thought the Berlin Wall, when it came down in uh, 1991, the dissolution of the United uh, USSR was somehow going to, uh, this meant that it was the end of communism. And somehow you look at the polling, socialism is on the rise here in the United States. So what do you do about it? This is, there's a long game to be played here that is, a, is about raising your kids. That's how we end up with outrage over critical race theory, the notion that the education, the public education system, even the private education systems in America uh, can be told that if you know, you have a certain skin color, then you're evil. I mean, this is a ridiculous thing to tell children. It's, 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 it's preposterous to do this to first and second graders, but that's what's happening. Now, 
What do we do about it? Here's what's interesting. We produce a lot of content when it comes to CPAC, and we would have uh, videos, and oftentimes it would be a montage of either heroes through generations, Bill Buckley, Ronald Reagan, Barry Goldwater, you transition to the heroes of today, Ted Cruz, Mark Meadows, uh, 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 Mike Lee, who are all fantastic politicians. The evolution that's going on here in America, and I think you guys recognize this, at the new heroes of the conservative movement that are holding up courageously the banners and values of conservatism are everyday Americans who have decided to challenge their school boards, who have decided to run for local Absolutely. office and say they've had enough. The phenomenon is that is what Donald Trump unlocked. The media loves to say that this is all about Trump, 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 Trump. The ratings have gone down for CNN. They focus it on him. This thing called conservatism in America today, and you see it here at CPAC, is about ordinary people deciding that they have the courage to stand up and participate in this beautiful thing that's American democracy. Ian Walters, so great to have you on. Uh, of course, Mark Meadows and Mike Pompeo have both been on this show, and they are uh, definitely uh, heroes of ours. Um, ten seconds left uh, before you head off to dinner. Donald Trump, what's the plan? <laughs> Uh, you overvalue uh, my ability to predict the future if you think uh, I know what he's going to say. Lots of reporters ask me, uh, I, I, you know, we'll see how he wakes up in that morning. There's a lot of buzz. Is he running? Is he not running in 2024? I don't know if he's made a decision, but I do know that everybody in this room is looking forward uh, to what he has to say, and not just the people that love him that are in this room, but the people who have figured out how to generate a lot of revenue off of his presence and existence, the people at CNN who, who, who have monitored uh, what he did while they're trying to destroy him at the same time. You know, he's a, he's a tough cookie. Uh, and I expect he'll say, uh, he, he'll say things that, that make news uh, and that also make us laugh and remind us uh, why it's so important to persevere as being an American and fight for democracy. Ian Walters, thanks so much for coming on from CPAC. And thanks to Annalise for sticking around. Uh, have a great dinner and uh, we'll catch you again. Thanks, mate. Thank you.